Hi there, welcome back to Penn Central 99's channel. Today we're at the workbench because, well, we're going to be doing work. Over the past couple of videos I've been threatening about experimenting with uh, surface mount LEDs and changing some things out, so that's what we're going to be doing today. Now before we get started, uh, I'm going to talk about some other videos that are out there. Um, I watched uh, Al Mayo's video on uh, surface mount LEDs and installing them and um, Al over at Monster Railroads got a couple of good uh, tutorial videos so I'm not even going to get into that other than the fact that you need to go watch them. Al's got some good points and some good videos but the other thing is, is none of us are going to get it on the first try. It takes a lot of practicing especially with such small items and I probably wasted about as much as I actually put together and got working but that's the way it is and this is what it's all about. So let's go ahead and get started. As far as the parts that we used, it's nothing different than any other video that you've seen on LED lights. Uh, but what I used is I used some uh, white hyper bright LEDs. They come in a pack of a hundred or a roll of a hundred. I just took them apart and, and put them in an old tube uh, so that I could get to them easier and, and I left the label in there so that I know what I'm, I'm after. Um, we also needed some resistors. Uh, these are 680 ohm resistors that I wired in. Also the other thing that we used is that we used some uh, 1.5 millimeter uh, fiber optic wire or tubing to transfer the light to where we need it and just like all the other videos uh, with your LED lights, first you need to determine which side is the positive and which side the negative before you do any soldering or wiring. But uh, what you end up with after you put all that together is as you can see here we have our um, here's our LED light. This is our uh, resistor right here and standard magnet wire. I bought some red and some white. I think I showed it to you in another video. I just don't have the red wire attached here. But this is the finished product after you um, put everything together and solder everything up. Like I said, it takes some practice. Uh, very few of us are going to do it on the first try. Uh, I probably practiced for a couple hours all afternoon one day until I stopped ruining and melting stuff and got it to work. So let's go ahead and go over to the layout. I'll put one of these LED lights after you get it all together and use some shrink wrap along with that uh, the tube to get it to fit together you know everything is in here you can see we got our two wires we, um, the resistor and the LED is in underneath that shrink wrap there and what I used is I used some 1 8 inch shrink wrap to keep it all together and um, I'll give you an idea what it looks like okay I've got this hooked up to track power and after installing your resistor on your LED and you can see I have a little piece of shrink wrap here that's what it looks like so now when you put the um, the light tube in there so that you can direct the light to where you wanted it you can see how that comes right through there now this doesn't look too bad but when I put it in the locomotive it looked like a night light and it almost looked like a cool blue and I wasn't very happy with it, so I changed it. So now I'm going to show you what I changed it to. Okay, here's a close-up of my Penn Central 8148. Uh, this is a GP382. I have not yet changed the lighting in here, other than the fact that there is a single 3 millimeter LED bulb that's in behind that housing. So as you can see here, we got one light trying to shine through two holes. That's just uh, flush mounted. I don't have any of that uh, fiber optic tubing in there yet, but you can see we get a lot of stray light here. You can see light coming down through the windshield. You can see that bulb trying to flash through as many opens as it can. Um, there's just a lot of stray light here. It doesn't look very realistic. Um, and like I say, after practicing a couple of days over the past week, trying to come up with some new ideas, I've got something different. And I'm going to show you what I did using this existing 3 millimeter light to get me two lights through those two headlight assemblies. Okay, lucky for you, this is going to be very easy for me to do. Uh, but what I did is I used uh, some existing 3 millimeter LED lights that I bought from Evans Design. Uh, they already have resistors built into them, so basically all I got to do is hook up the wires, 
install this um, one and a half millimeter fiber optic light tubing, put it back in the locomotive, and we're ready to go. Okay, I've got the shell off the, the frame, and as you can see here, I've just got uh, that LED light fixed in there with some electrical tape. Now, of course, I've got the shell and the wires twisted around a little bit so you can see what's going to go on. But basically, I'm just going to remove this. It's going to pull right out of here. There's that LED light that I tried to file down to a smaller size to get it into that opening. Um, so let's go ahead and get this changed out so that we can make this look good. Okay, heat shrink tubing, fit it down over the light. I've got two of these one and a half millimeter tubes. Now you want a little bit of uh, room because these lights have to go through this housing up here and the plastic is a little bit thick. So now I'm just going to take my uh, soldering iron and I'm going to shrink that till it all fits together. Now the soldering iron is uh, just taking that shrink tubing Got a nice little light tube here. Shouldn't have any stray light by the time I get done with it. Now you don't want to hold it there too long because you can distort the fiber optic tubes. By applying too much heat you want to be nice and even all the way around. Now let's go put this on the uh, the track before we put it all back together just to see what this looks like. Okay, the test uh, before putting the shell back on seems to be going okay. You can see I've uh, got my two light tubes here. You can see the lights coming through right there in the end. Now we put this uh, back in the shell. We're going to have uh, two distinctly different lights off of one three millimeter light. As you can see, the light tubing is back in place, but all I did was uh, secure that with a piece of black electrical tape. So even though the heat shrink is going to help um, eliminate a lot of that stray light, that black electrical tape helps cover up that assembly. So I'll put the shell back on, we'll put her back on the track, and uh, we'll show you what it looks like. Okay, here's the finished product. I've got everything back together, and as you can see, um, using my method, I've got two distinctly different uh, lights. I don't have as much, if any, um, over light or stray light through the cab. Um, it looks a lot better. I know you probably can't see everything that I can through the camera, but um, I think this is a quick, easy little project. Um, I'm not going to give up on the surface mount LEDs. I just haven't figured out the trick to it yet. But I'm also using as existing uh, three millimeter lights uh, broken down into two 1.5 millimeter light tube and as you can see I think that looks a lot better looks a lot more realistic um, and it's putting the light right where I want it on the front of the locomotive okay here's another example of one of the LED lights I set up using the two uh, fiber optic tube to direct the light <coughs> I'm sorry direct the light to where I want it but you can see this is a lot more brighter a lot more realistic and I'm putting the light where I want it not where it wants to go. Here is my Santa Fe 3500. This is a uh, GP40 and I have the uh, light or headlight configuration set up for the figure of eight or oscillating because uh, this particular model does not have uh, dish lights. So what I set up as a house rule or home rule is the oscillating uh, figure of eight to simulate the dish-like effect, the dish light effect. Well, that pretty much does it for this video. I hope you learned something, and these are uh, my findings after experimenting with surface mount LEDs and different types of resistors and using them for headlight assemblies. As always, thanks for watching.